Pardon the interruption, I'm Frank Isola. Hey, Tony, the Queen of England is getting a raise to $97 million per year. And Tony Kornheiser never should have broken up with her. <laughs> you know what the president makes? We looked this up. $250,000. $400,000. Really? $400,000. So if the president makes $400,000 and the Queen of England makes $97 million, the answer to who's more dateable is the Queen the of point. England. $97 million worth when I was every penny. Last time I was there, she said, how's that old bloke, Tony, doing? I said, I don't know. I haven't seen him. Well, you know, we had some good nights together. I guess it was the summer of 52. <laughs> Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. Wilbon has the day off, but on a big NBA day, I am lucky to be joined by a man who covers the league for the New York Daily News, Mr. Frank Isola. Big NBA day. Big. And we begin today with the very surprising news that the Los Angeles Clippers have traded Chris Paul to the Houston Rockets. Paul reportedly had informed the Clippers of his intent to leave for Houston as a free agent. So facing losing Paul entirely, the Clippers made a trade and will reportedly get Patrick Beverly, Lou Williams, and some other stuff. Frank, does Chris Paul playing in the same backcourt as James Harden make any sense to you? You know what? I'm always of the belief that great players can make it work. They made it work in Miami. Obviously, they made it work in Golden State. Now, James Harden is a ball-dominant point guard. Yes, he, he had is. a career year last year. Yes, he did. Dominating the ball. In terms of time of possession, I know a stat that you love, he led the league in time of possession, and Chris Paul was about seven. I think Mike D'Antoni can make it work, though, because you know what? When it got to the playoffs, game six against San Antonio, Harden was shut down. Now at least you have two stars out there. I understand this in theory, and I understand that D'Antoni will not put them together all the time, and each one will substitute for the other, so one of them will always be out on the court, yep. and, and I, I get that. But Mike D'Antoni made James Harden a great MVP candidate because he said, this is your ball, you control it, you shoot it, you pass it, and I believe he led the league in assists. I just don't understand what they think they're doing with Chris Paul, also a ball-dominant guard. To me, you know what they look like now? They look like the Wizards. They look like the Wizards, and I have two questions. Who's going to defend exactly for them? James Harden, not a defender, fair to say. And how are they going to get the ball? How is that going to work? Well, I would say this about Harden. The one thing that would concern me, Harden is a genius at getting to the foul line. He draws fouls all over the court, except for in the playoffs where they don't call it as close. They were decisively beaten in the playoffs. Because he can't get to the foul line. But I tend to think that this move leads to something else because players want to play with Chris Paul. The Rockets are going to have some cap space. You know who they're loading up for. Here comes that name again. Paul George. Everybody wants Paul George. Exactly. So I think they're now, Daryl Morey knows he's got to make big moves. You either have to rebuild now in a Western Conference with the Golden State Warriors, or you have to try to go for it. They're going for it. Yeah, so that is the question I have, and I respect Morey, and I respect the whole notion of of analytics in basketball, and what's the best shot? Is the three the best shot? And here's why the three is the best shot, or you open it up for twos and you go to the foul line, and I get all of that. But what does this do for them with the Golden State Warriors? I don't think it makes them competitive with the Golden State Warriors. I'm not sure it does. But they lost last year in the second round to San Antonio. And everything we heard was that the Spurs were going to go after Chris Paul. If I'm Chris Paul, I think it makes more sense being on San Antonio because I think Kawhi Leonard would be a better player to play with than James Harden. But once again, you have to have multiple stars I guess they're pals, and I guess from the Olympics they wanted to play together. I am, su- I am surprised at this. Th- I'm surprised that they're together yeah. and that Chris Paul wanted out to go to Houston. I'm surprised. But, but Mike D'Antoni loves guards. We'll see if he can make it work. All right. Uh, the Clippers, of course, with Chris Paul, they never got out of the second round. That includes blowing a 3-1 lead to James Harden and the Houston Rockets a couple of years ago. Now Chris Paul is gone. Blake Griffin's a free agent. And the idea that the Clippers would ever rule Los Angeles sounds as preposterous as ever. All right, last week... The Clippers owner, Dancing Steve Ballmer, your buddy, guy. hired Jerry West as a consultant. So I'll ask you, what should the logo and the second team in L.A. do now? I'm going to say something that you're not supposed to say in these exchange relationship shows where we're supposed to be smart. I don't know. They look dead to me. Yeah. They, 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 they do. Uh, Blake Griffin will probably stay. I mean, you get that sense. And that's good because he looks like an L.A. guy. Those commercials are really good, and he's probably happy. He's also hurt all the time. I, I, I don't know where they go because it seems to me... And I think Jerry West is a genius, and I think he's had the greatest career in any sport, yeah. and it's 50 years long. But it seems to me that Magic Johnson will pump in a lot of energy to the Lakers, and that if, if L.A.'s where you want to go, the Lakers are going to be where Always. you want to go. So I, I, I don't know where they I, go. And it's like they had their chance to kind of take – they were never going to take over L.A. They were the most disappointing team. The last two Tony, years in, in the NBA, they're the most disappointing team. Tony, they were 14 minutes away 
from making it to a conference finals. They blew that game at home. And let, hey, that's on Chris Paul's resume, Doc Rivers, yeah. Blake yeah. Griffin. But I'll say this about Blake Griffin. The word was that he and Chris Paul didn't get along. I just wonder, how is DeAndre Jordan and, Chris, and uh, Blake Griffin going to do without Chris Paul? Because all we ever used to see them do, it's Lob City. Throwing the ball up to the basket, they would grab it and dunk it. It was a great show. I just wonder if they're not going to play with a point guard of that caliber, how effective the two of them will be. I think if you look at the Clippers, what we would agree with, and we may not agree about Chris Paul, but what we would agree with is that it did not work. No. Um, and, and it looked like the whole was less than the sum of the parts when you got done. I can give you this fascinating scenario because you mentioned Ballmer. Ballmer has all the money yep. in the world. I believe at the end of next season, um, because the NBA offseason is always better than the NBA regular yep. season, I believe at the end of the next season that the following people could be free agents. And this would be LeBron James yep. and Chris Paul and Carmelo Anthony has an opt-out and Dwayne Wade. I'm leaving the banana some, boat. Crew. I'm leaving, yeah, uh, Paul George. Yeah. So what if Ballmer just said, hello, here's <laughs> no. a bunch of money, let's see. You just answered it, though. The players all want to go play for the other L.A. team, so they'll have money, too. If LeBron's going anywhere in L.A., it's the Lakers. I would think so. Yeah. We continue with blockbuster NBA news. Phil Jackson, who just two months ago had the final two years of his contract picked up, is suddenly out with the New York Knicks. Owner James Dolan fired Jackson after three years of wandering aimlessly at the bottom of the Eastern Conference. The Knicks were 80 and 166 under Jackson. Frank, the Knicks are your account. Why you, did they do this now? You, you were being kind to the Knicks aimlessly. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense from this standpoint. You allowed him to make the draft pick last yeah. week. And That's now five days later. From France. Yeah. So now five days later, you're getting rid of him just before free agency. As you know, there's never a good time to get fired. So if you're going to do it. Why not now and try? Because the last thing you want to do, I was always worried Phil was going to build this triangle team and then he'd be gone in a year, two years, and a whole new regime comes in. You know they're not playing the triangle. So I think based on what happened with Carmelo, trying to get a buyout, and Jim Dolan said, we're not giving you a buyout, Phil's relationship with Kristaps Porzingis, the way that was handled, and then unfortunately the report about him that came out about him sleeping during a workout, that hurt him. Also the report on ESPN that agents and players don't look at New York as a destination, but more so as a laughing stock. I think Jim Dolan said, you know what, enough is enough. To me, it's never one thing that gets a guy dismissed. It's a bunch of things. I'm going to go to the laughing stock circumstance and New York City because in two separate boroughs, they have two terrible teams. Yep. They have the Knicks and the Nets who appear to be run by no one who understands basketball. I think Jimmy Dolan's the worst owner in all of sports. Um, what you've seen is he's made two terrible choices to run his team. He made Isaiah Thomas, who got in actual real trouble and cost him millions yeah, yeah. of dollars, and Phil Jackson, who I love, but who did not accomplish anything in, in a relatively short time. They tarnished the coaching career of Larry Brown. Yes. They tarnished the coaching career of Mike D'Antoni. Yep. They, Phil trashed Carmelo Anthony every which way, yep. and poor Zingas, you're, you're angry because he doesn't have... Uh, an exit interview, and then he's shown cycling in Central Park. But yeah. somebody's got to be the adult in the room. And it looks, it looks Tony, terrible right Tony, now. Tony, when he was a coach in L.A. and Chicago, but really more so in L.A., it's one thing to be eccentric as a coach. You just showed Steve Ballmer, eccentric as an owner. You can't be eccentric as a team president, as the guy in charge. You can't be calling guys out publicly. It doesn't work in today's NBA. Unfortunately, you have to coddle. You have to have a good relationship with agents other team yeah. executives, and he didn't and have that. And you can't that. take on LeBron as well, because LeBron is a very popular and important e figure. Exactly. But I will say this, because everybody asks, well, what does this mean for Phil Jackson's legacy? It's possible we disagree. I don't think it hurts very much, because I, I, think you have, I think your first paragraph is 11 championships, and in your second paragraph it says, and after his retirement as a coach, he had an ill-fated yep. few years as the head executive of the Knicks. I, I, I think that 20 years from now, I, it will not look nearly you, as bad as it looks now. You stole now. the words, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 years from yep. now, he'll be remembered as a great coach. And Jim Dolan shouldn't have hired him for anything but a head coach. That's the problem. All of this Phil Jackson stuff, the end of his tenure, the end clearly, as you mentioned, of the triangle, the unknown confusing circumstances surrounding Carmelo Anthony and Kristaps Porzingis. This is all a jumble now. And like I said, Frankie, the Knicks are your account. Where do they go from here? All right. Here? Now, the reports are that Jim Dolan likes Masai Ujiri. I heard about this last season. I wrote a story about it. Masai, the Toronto Raptors general manager, is under contract. So to get him... You have to give up compensation. Are you really going to give up a first-round pick when chances are you're going to be in the lottery Give him Joakim again? Noah. You don't and need well, him. And, you and know what? You're up to $55 million for him. We'll put a bow on that. We'll drive him to the <laughs> airport. Right. But they're not taking that. So clearly you want to hire a guy that has experience and, you know, a guy that can establish a culture there, do things the right way. That's what they want to feel. Is the coach safe? Is the coach safe? I don't think. How can he be? Right. How can he be? I will say this. If I'm Jeff Hornacek, 
I'm kind of happy because the offense that I wanted to run wasn't the triangle. Now I'm going to get to, to run the offense I want to run. Porzingis is going to be happy. Carmelo is going to be happy. I have some money in free agency. The big thing is do you bring back Derrick Rose? Carmelo's a ghost. He's a ghost of what he was. Porzingis uh -huh. is the guy but you have to build around But he can still score 22 now. points, though. When you said the, a little while ago, when you said that, that there's a chance that free agents don't want to go to New York, I think that is easily reversed because I think yeah. that New York is a very attractive city. New York and Los Angeles are very, very yep. attractive cities. Because I'm old, I'm going to take the opportunity to be nostalgic here. As Wilbon <laughs> always says, this is the team of my youth. Yeah. And it is the team of Willis Reed and Dave DeBusher and Bill Bradley and Walt Frazier and Dick Barnett and Earl Monroe and Phil Jackson. Yep. And Phil Jackson, who I've known a very long time and whom I love. And, and May 8th, 1970, is, is Willis Reed. He comes off the bench. He's hurt. He hits his first two shots. They win a game. Clyde had there's, a good game that night, too. Yes, he did. There's nothing like that again in 45 no. years. I mean, it's just, it's just not like that. And, and they've never won again, right? They yeah. got Patrick Ewing got but, to the finals. Know, but, Riley, you know, Pat Jeff Van Gundy did get him to a finals. But, but you, we're not even close to that What anymore. we're looking at now is, is what the Knicks were in the 1950s, the worst team of all. I mean, okay, there are worse teams yeah. than the Knicks. But it's a big-time city with a lot of money and a, a fabulously frenzied basketball audience, and they have nothing. Now. Isn't it amazing, though, that Phil They'll Jackson was brought in to establish some credibility, make the Knicks respectable, and he goes out, and they're a laughing stock, unfortunately. It's gonna, right. Years, right? Years. That's right. I got years. at least two. Let's Just take a more. break. Well, that's two. Years. <laughs> Coming up, could the Celtics really add both Gordon Hayward and Paul, Paul George? How often are we talking about this guy? And did the Cubs, talking about a team we talk about a lot, do they really need to cut their catcher for what he said last night? Actually, yes. Yes. <laughs> they really did. I heard it. Yes. You they don't go after your star pitcher no. like that. I would never go after you. We have even more headlines to get to, and let's start with the report from The Vertical that the Boston Celtics are working to land both Paul George and Gordon Hayward, hoping to get a Hayward commitment first. The Celtics reportedly believe they could convince George to stay with them beyond this season. Frank, do you like Boston's chances to pull this off, and would it be enough? You know what? I do like their chances, and I think one of the reasons they didn't go after Jimmy Butler, I think they're saving their assets, their cap space, for both Gordon Hayward and Paul George. And if I'm, here, here's the big thing. You look at the trade that was talked about, the Denver Nuggets and the Cleveland Cavaliers in trading Paul George. If I'm Indiana, I want the best deal for myself. I'm not worried about where Paul George ends up. I have to, if I'm going to trade my best player, yeah. I have to get something of value back. Guess which team has something of value? The Boston Celtics. They have a ton of picks. They have young players. That's where you make the deal. They believe Gordon, They think they're going to get Gordon Hayward. He's going to be their starting shooting guard next year. This is odd for me because about seven or eight minutes ago, I said that I didn't like the Harden matchup with Chris Paul because they were essentially the same player. And I think that George and Hayward are essentially the same player, even if one plays two yeah. and one plays three. The difference for me in this is this team already has Isaiah Thomas. You are going after Golden State when you do this because you say they play small and we can yeah. play small and we can play fast. There is a greater goal here, and I think it's Golden State. But my, my cautionary tale in this is that before you make a judgment today, just wait until tomorrow. Because every day now, this is much more exciting than the regular season. Every day now, things Everybody are going to change. It. And next year, with LeBron James, the, the league is going to capsize. It's going to go upside yeah, but, but down. Tony, it's going to be wild. Don't you think that Danny Ainge at some point has to cash in here? We can't keep talking about next year, the year after that. You go out. Oh, no, this is the right move for him. Yeah, Because you won it's 53 totally right games. Move. And you lost, you know, you got killed by Cleveland, even though you won a game. And Isaiah Thomas was hurt. You're not going to be able to win with just one star. This makes you totally competitive with Cleveland in the East right now. And I think it makes you, I'm not saying they're as good as Golden State, because that would be crazy. But they would play a similar style as Golden yeah. State. And then if you get lucky, you know, maybe you yeah. beat them. And, and two things. Gordon Hayward, number one, he'd be reunited with his college coach. Now, Paul George could always tell the Boston Celtics, I'm not going to resign with you. But if I'm the Celtics, I'd say, you know what, we'll convince you that this yeah, is the place sure. you want to be. All right, the Chicago Cubs imploded on and off the field while losing 6-1 to the Nationals last night. Cubs catcher Miguel Montero was designated for assignment today after criticizing losing pitcher Jake Arrieta in a game where the Nationals stole seven bases in four innings. Montero says it's easy to blame the catcher, but, quote, my pitchers, meaning Jake Arrieta, don't hold anyone on. Montero later apologized to Arrieta, but he's still out of a job. So, Tony, were the Cubs justified here? It's not just seven last night. It's on the year 31 of 31. That's a 100% success rate against this particular catcher. And I watched, the, I watched the game last night. Trey Turner stole every time yep. he got on, second and third. And, and Montero, these is a direct quote, so I think I can use the word. Direct quote. It really sucks. 
I have to take full responsibility, <laughs> but I didn't get any time. Well, you're not taking full responsibility. I mean, you're, no. you're looking at, you, I think we would both agree that Theo Epstein and Joe Madden have some sense of what their locker room ought to be. And then you have Anthony Rizzo saying you yeah. can't criticize players. They, they had to do this. Yeah. They had to do it. Yeah, Rizzo said we win as a team, we lose as a team. You know, I mean, he, he, all those bases weren't stolen off the catcher alone. I mean, no. Arietta was part of that, but you don't light him up yeah. like that. Yeah, he does have a slow delivery to home plate. Now, while you had a meet and greet in Bethesda, I was actually at the game doing research for the show. So don't talk about how you watched the game. I was actually I there. I watched the game yeah, but it's from different my house being in there. the District of Columbia. I actually experienced I was yeah, I know, but Ryan home had free tickets, and, you know, <laughs> so we took you. You were on the arm. But how about Montero? Here, you talk about bad timing. You're going to go after your star pitcher. He's the same guy that on the day of the parade criticized the way Madden had used him during the season. Okay, so Wilbon calls me last night, and, and, and he just throws down all the resignation that he's got. Yep. Because it's like 4-1, and it's soon to be 6-1. And he was very critical of Montero. But he said Contreras, who I think is the other catcher, yeah. he loves him. He loves him, but when Wilbon gives up by the fifth inning, it's brutal. And, and how quickly they forget, Montero hit a big home run in the World Series last year. Helped him win a game. So. And you know where he is now? He's not in the World Series. He's gone. <laughs> You're right. The Cubs, speaking of the Cubs, made their second trip to the White House today. About half the team met President Trump. All but four made it to the January visit with President Obama. Cubs co-owner Todd Ricketts, who had once been invited to serve in the Trump administration, made today's visit happen. But the trip was voluntary. Any issue with it, Frank? You know what? I like how the Cubs went a little business casual there. You know what? I don't have an issue f f uh, from this standpoint. You're still visiting the White House. That's right. It's not the administration you're visiting. It's a chance to go to the White House. If I got invited, I would go, and guess what? If I ran into the president, I'd say, is there anything you can do with the traffic outside the Lincoln Tunnel? Use the opportunity maybe to tell them something. I don't have a problem with it. But it was a little awkward. At one point, Donald Trump, actually President Trump, actually waved Dan Gilbert out. Dan Gilbert owns the Cleveland Cavaliers. He's obviously a Detroit guy. He had him come and take a picture. What was that about? I, I mean, how bizarre is that? First of all, his team Doesn't lost. Doesn't he own Quicken Loans, too? And Quicken Loans. Maybe Trump's looking for a loan so that, on some on There some must be something, but yeah. that was a little bizarre. I don't have an issue with it. What, um, you know what? And I don't have a problem with guys that don't want to go. You don't want to, yeah. If you don't want to go, fine. If you want to kneel during the anthem, fine. These are protected yeah. rights under the Constitution of the United States. I've been very, very fortunate. I've lived in Washington a long time and either at receptions or some sort of event. I've got to go to the White House and I've got to meet President Reagan and I met President George H.W. Bush and I met President Clinton and I met President Obama. And every time I went, it's not that it's political, every time I went I felt honored. I brought my kids. I, I thought it was great. This is, this is respect for the office. It's the President of the United States of America. If you don't want to go, fine. But I, I feel it's a great honor to walk in. It's the people's house. You get to walk yeah. in. It's lovely. I love how it's you're lovely. a regular guy name-dropping presidents. I knew President Phil Jackson. Does that count? No, because he's out now. And <laughs> you know, Reagan notion, is out. The notion that you Bush would say out. that I even think of myself as a regular guy is cloudy. <laughs> Unbelievable. Let's take Name one dropping. last break. Still to come, is Andrew Luck right <laughs> not to be down about his shoulder recovery? And how should Bill Belichick feel about his Nantucket magazine photo spread? I you were on it. You were on the uh, May cover. I think it's a big deal to get invited to the White House. Absolutely. I think I would it's go. a great honor, and I think people should go. I, I mean, if you don't want to, it's okay also. I would go. But I would go. I want to see what it looks like. Well, I'll see, if, I'll see what I can do. Exactly. <laughs> okay, Kevin, for the grand prize of $1 million, what color is the White House? Um, I know this, I know this, I know this. Um, five seconds. Oh, switching to Geico could save you a bunch of money on car insurance? Okay. Judges? That's true, Kevin. Bill will it. Congratulations. You're a winner. Woo! Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. It has been widely reported that Beal and Wall don't like each other. And now that Wall wants to get rid of Otto Porter Jr. <laughs> to bring in Paul George, that makes for a fun uh, locker room dynamic, doesn't you it, You know Frank? what? When Bradley Beal's healthy, he and John Wall, they're in the conversation for best back court after Steph Curry and Clay Thompson. No, they're very well... They put themselves in that conversation, yeah. but it's been legit this year. Yeah, when totally helped. legit. Happy anniversary, Vladimir Putin. On this day 12 years ago, Putin lifted Bob Kraft's Super Bowl ring. <laughs> Kraft showed off his ring to Putin, and the uh... Russian president assumed it was a gift. Since then, Kraft has collected two more rings, and Putin has collected a presidential election he so eagerly sought oh. hours. Come oh. on now, we're the laughs here. We can't. That's a we rim can. shot thing. That Who was gets good. to the White House first, me or Putin? You. Good. You. You've been there. You'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> Happy trails to LSU. In an all-SEC final, Florida won two straight games versus LSU to capture the College World Series championship. 
LSU had previously won six College World Series. Florida has won national championships in football right. and in basketball, but this was their first title in baseball, joining Michigan, Ohio State, and UCLA as the only other schools to accomplish that feat. You know, I actually had a more enjoyable time watching the softball when Florida lost to Oklahoma. That was actually pretty good. So Fl Florida is obviously going to be a, a school that's competitive in all sorts yeah. of things. There's going to be all sorts of national titles. But to, to do the triple like that, Baseball, basketball, and football. And There's the, only four schools. Yeah. That's a big and deal. And their women's teams are good. So softball, lacrosse, even your favorite sport, soccer. Wouldn't you have thought that USC would be one of those schools yeah. that would get them all? And, That's and, true. You know, they didn't. Good weather. UCLA got it, though. Yeah, so that was absolutely. Good. All right, no errors today, and we go to the big finish. Jason White Chocolate Williams is out six to eight months after, six to eight months after suffering a knee injury in the opening game of your big three league. Are you disappointed? Yeah, ready for this. There's going to be a lot of injuries. Corey Maggette also suffered a devastating uh, Achilles injury. He's going to be out for the a The league will be well. bankrupt before he gets back. <laughs> They're not going to make it to week nine, that's for sure. Andrew Luck still isn't throwing, says he's not sullen or morose. Should he be? Not now. It's June. If he's not thrown in late August or early September, I think so it's a bigger concern. He gets hurt a lot, more yeah. than he should. Bill Belichick did a cover shoot for Nantucket Magazine. Are you a fan? He looks terrific. Not as good as you on the cover of the Hamptons Magazine, but I like Bill. But you know what? He didn't go with the uh, pullover. I actually no. wore an, an actual outfit here. All right, Steph Curry will compete in the Web.com Tour event in August. How do you think he's going to do? I'm told that he's like a one or a scratch. The guy's on the Web.com Tour, plus three, plus four. He's not going to win. He's going to have a great time. Those guys are great. Last one, Chile beat Portugal in penalty kicks. You care about this. Is it a Ch big deal? Chile won. It's a big deal. You and Ronaldo, a lot in common. Good looking and rich. How about I think, that? I think actually he looks like reality. We're out of time. We're trying to do better the next time. I'm Tony Kornheiser. And I'm Frank Isola. Wilbon is back tomorrow. You can get the DJI podcast on ESPN app or Apple Happy podcast. birthday, Canada 150. And now five days later, from France. yeah, so now five days later, you're getting rid of him just before free agency. As you know, there's never a good time to get fired. So if you're going to do it, why not now and try? Because the last thing you want to do, I was always worried Phil was going to build this triangle team and then he'd be gone in a year, two years and a whole new regime comes in. You know, they're not playing the triangle. So I think based on what happened with Carmelo trying to get a buyout and Jim Dolan said, we're not giving you a buyout. Phil's relationship with Kristaps Przingis, the way that was handled. And then, unfortunately, the report about him that came out about him sleeping during a workout, that hurt him. Also, the report on ESPN that agents and players don't look at New York as a destination, but more so as a laughing stock. I think Jim Dolan said, you know what? Enough is enough. To me, it's never one thing that gets a guy dismissed. It's a bunch of things. I'm going to go to the laughing stock circumstance and New York City because in two separate boroughs, they have two terrible teams. Yep. They have the Knicks and the Nets who appear to be run by no one who understands basketball. I think Jimmy Dolan's the worst owner in all of sports. Um, what you've seen is he's made two terrible choices to run his team. He made Isaiah Thomas, who got in actual real trouble and cost him millions yeah, yeah. of dollars, and Phil Jackson, who I love, but who did not accomplish anything in, in a relatively short time. They tarnished the coaching career of Larry Brown. Yes. They tarnished the coaching career of Mike D'Antoni. Yeah. They, Phil trashed Carmelo Anthony every which way, yeah. and Porzingis, you're, you're angry because he doesn't have uh, an exit interview, and then he's shown cycling in Central Park. But yeah. somebody's got to be the adult in the room. And it looks, it looks Tony, terrible right Tony, now. Tony, when he was a coach in L.A. and Chicago, but really more so in L.A., it's one thing to be eccentric as a coach. You conference finals, they blew that game at home. And let, hey, that's on Chris Paul's resume, Doc Rivers, yeah. Blake yeah. Griffin. But I'll say this about Blake Griffin. The word was that he and Chris Paul didn't get along. I just wonder, how is DeAndre Jordan and, Chris, and uh, Blake Griffin going to do without Chris Paul? Because all we ever used to see them do, it's Lob City. Throwing the ball up to the basket, they would grab it and dunk it. It was a great show. I just wonder if they're not going to play with a point guard of that caliber, how effective the two of them will be. I think if you look at the Clippers, what we would agree with, and we may not agree about Chris Paul, but what we would agree with is that it did not work. No. Um, and, and it looked like the whole was less than the sum of the parts when you got done. I can give you this fascinating scenario because you mentioned Ballmer. Ballmer has all the money yep. in the world. I believe at the end of next season, um, because the NBA offseason is always better than the NBA yeah. regular season, I believe at the end of next season that the following people could be free agents. And this would be LeBron James yep. and Chris Paul 
and Carmelo Anthony has an opt out and Dwayne Wade. I'm leaving the banana some, boat. Girl. I'm leaving. Yeah, uh, Paul George. Yeah. So what if Ballmer just said, "Hello, here's <laughs> no. a bunch of money. Let's see." You just answered it though. The players all want to go play for the other LA team, so they'll have money too. If LeBron's going anywhere in LA, it's the Lakers. I would think so. Yeah. We continue with blockbuster NBA news. Phil Jackson, who just two months ago had the final two years of his contract picked up, is suddenly out with the New York Knicks. Owner James Dolan fired Jackson after three years of wandering aimlessly at the bottom of the Eastern Conference. The Knicks were 80 and 166 under Jackson. Frank, the Knicks are your account. Why did they do this now? You you were being kind to the Knicks, aimlessly. It it doesn't make a lot of sense from this standpoint. You allowed him to make the draft pick last week. At least you have two stars out there. I understand this in theory. And I understand that D'Antoni will not put them together all the time and each one will substitute for the other. So one of them will always be out on the court. Yep. And, and I, I get that. But Mike D'Antoni made James Harden a great MVP candidate because he said, this is your ball. You control it. You shoot it. You pass it. And I believe he led the league in assists. I just don't understand what they think they're doing with Chris Paul, also a ball dominant yep. guard. To me, you know what they look like now? They look like the Wizards. They look like the Wizards, and I have two questions. Who's going to defend exactly for them? James Harden, not a defender, fair to say. And how are they going to get the ball? How is that going to work? Well, I would say this about Harden. The one thing that would concern me, Harden is a genius at getting to the foul line. He draws fouls all over the court, except for in the playoffs where they don't call it as close. They were decisively beaten in the playoffs. Because he can't get to the foul line. But I tend to think that this move leads to something else, because players want to play with Chris Paul. The Rockets are going to have some cap space. You know who they're loading up for. Here comes that name again, Paul George. Everybody wants Paul George. Exactly. So I think they're now, Daryl Morey knows you've got to make big moves. You either have to rebuild now in a Western Conference with the Golden State Warriors, or you have to try to go for it. They're going for it. Yeah, so that is the question I have, and I respect Morey, and I respect the whole notion of of analytics in basketball and what's the best shot is the three the best shot and here's why the three is the best shot or you open it up for twos and you go to the foul line and i get all of that but what does this do for them with the golden state warriors i don't think it makes them competitive with the golden state warriors i'm not sure it does but they lost last year in the second round to san antonio and everything we heard was that the spurs were going to go after chris paul Part of the interruption, I'm Frank Isola. Hey, Tony, the Queen of England is getting a raise to $97 million per year. And Tony Kornheiser. Never should have broken up with her. Do you know what the president makes? We looked this up. $250,000. $400,000. Really? $400,000. So if the president makes $400,000 and the Queen of England makes $97 million, the answer to who's more dateable is the Queen the of point. England. $97 million worth when I was every penny. last time I was there, she said, "How's that old bloke Tony doing?" I said, "I don't know. I haven't seen him." Well, you know, we had some good nights together. I guess it was the summer of '52. <laughs> Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. Wilbon has the day off, but on a big NBA day, I am lucky to be joined by a man who covers the league for the New York Daily News, Mr. Frank Isola. Big NBA day. Big. And we begin today with the very surprising news that the Los Angeles Clippers have traded Chris Paul to the Houston Rockets. Paul reportedly had informed the Clippers of his intent to leave for Houston as a free agent. So facing losing Paul entirely, the Clippers made a trade and will reportedly get Patrick Beverly, Lou Williams, and some other stuff. Frank, does Chris Paul playing in the same backcourt as James Harden make any sense to you? You know what? I'm always of the belief that great players can make it work. They made it work in Miami. Obviously, they made it work in Golden State. Now, James Harden is a ball-dominant point guard. Yes, he, he had is. a career year last year. Yes, he did. Dominating the ball. In terms of time of possession, I know a stat that you love, he led the league in time of possession, and Chris Paul was about seventh. I think Mike D'Antoni can make it work, though, because you know what? When it got to the playoffs, game six against San Antonio, Harden was shut down. Now at least, If I'm That's Chris right. Paul, I think it makes more sense being on San Antonio because I think Kawhi Leonard would be a better player to play with than James Harden. But once again, you have to have multiple stars I guess to they're win. pals. And I guess from the Olympics, they wanted to play together. I am, su- I am surprised at this. Th- I'm surprised that they're together yeah. and that Chris Paul wanted out to go to Houston. But, I'm surprised. But Mike D'Antoni loves guards. We'll see if he can make it work. All right. Uh, the Clippers, of course, with Chris Paul, they never got out of the second round. That includes blowing a 3-1 lead to James Harden and the Houston Rockets a couple of years ago. Now Chris Paul is gone. Blake Griffin's a free agent. And the idea that the Clippers would ever rule Los Angeles sounds as preposterous as ever. All right, last week, the Clippers owner, Dancing Steve Ballmer, your buddy, guy. hired Jerry West as a consultant. So I'll ask you, what should the logo and the second team 
in L.A. do now. I'm going to say something that you're not supposed to say in these exchange relationship shows where we're supposed to be smart. I don't know. They look dead to me. Yeah. They, 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 they do. Uh, Blake Griffin will probably stay. I mean, you get that sense. And that's good because he looks like an L.A. guy. Those commercials are really good, and he's probably happy. He's also hurt all the time. I, I, I don't know where they go because it seems to me, and I think Jerry West is a genius, and I think he's had the greatest career in, in any sport, yeah. and it's 50 years long. But it seems to me that Magic Johnson will pump in a lot of energy to the Lakers and that if, if L.A.'s where you want to go, the Lakers are going to be where Always. you want to go. So I, I, I don't know where they and, go. And it's like they had their chance to kind of take – they were never going to take over L.A. They were the most disappointing team. The last two Tony, years in, in the NBA, they're the most disappointing team. Tony, they were 14 minutes away from making it to a conference.